Hello everyone, Theodore Burns here. This is week six of my Indie Pro 2000 lap walkthrough series. Uh, this is the halfway point in the season, and this time we are at Lime Rock Park on the classic layout, so no chicanes. Um, ran the hot lap in the same conditions I've been using all season, uh, which is about 23C, 25C air track, minimal wind, 25% low usage. Uh, this week, the iRacing baseline setup felt pretty solid. It was uh, it was pretty quick, uh, but I noticed it, it needed a little bit of improvement in mainly turn 5, the uphill, and turn 7, the downhill. It was starting to lean on the left rear a little bit too much and kind of scrub a little bit of speed coming onto the straight. So I made a couple small little adjustments to uh, help with that and make it a little bit more stable on corner entries. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that. I, th I thought it was... Uh, it's a pretty safe, uh, pretty solid, and pretty quick setup. Um, it's uh, still running the high downforce, so uh, should be uh, should be about what about where we're at uh, for this week. And um, yeah, I think uh, I think you guys uh, should enjoy it. So let me know if you have any uh, any feedback on the setup, how you guys like that. Uh, without further ado, uh, here is the hot lap from the in car. And forgot to mention this week I ran a 44.929 in these conditions. Uh, so started off a couple tenths off that, was able to climb down. I'm sure we'll see uh, maybe even down to the mid 44s, low 44s, uh, especially given a draft or some uh, some cooler conditions. All right, so starting it off, coming up into turn one, big bend. It's actually turns one and two. So my approach for this, uh, I'm using the two board over here is my brake marker. And I, I think a very common theme around Lime Rock is going to be, it's going to be a lighter brake, roll a lot of speed, but be extremely smooth on the steering and very patient on your throttle. Uh, so, so coming into here, I'm going to use the two board and that's going to be the heaviest brake zone of, of the entire track. But even then it's only about 50, 60% and you notice I get out of that extremely quickly and it, and I'm kind of just uh, dragging like a trail break uh, as I come into the corner. And I'm going to be dragging a trail break all the way uh, past turn one apex and kind of out and getting the double apex into turn two at the end of uh, end of big bend here. So it, it's, a, it's a very, very aggressive uh, break at first, but then I want to ease out of it pretty quickly at about, at about the time I turn in. I'm going to be turning in somewhere after the the one board here but what I'm really looking at is looking at the curb up here um, and, and I want to get down uh, and put the right sides right up to this curb I don't want to actually get the right sides on the curb because uh, it can kind of upset the car and I want to make sure I keep the left side tires loaded consistently throughout the corner here uh, there's a little bit of camber to help us but if you do end up going out about mid track it kind of flattens out and it's really easy to get sucked off track uh, so I want to make sure I stay stay on the the right to about middle of the track uh, as I come through here and so this is going to be something you're kind of going to kind of need to experiment with with how much brake uh, you need to carry because the brake will help keep the weight on the nose keep the car turning but also you don't want to carry so much speed that you that you go out too wide in the middle of the corner here like I said it's kind of a double apex and you, you want to end up about right here which is about mid track uh, so it's going to kind of um you're going to kind of have to experiment a couple laps, seeing how much brake you need to carry so you don't end up farther left than mid-track here, because it is a little bit flatter out here. We want to stay stay kind of in the camber. Uh, you'll notice I'm keeping a very consistent uh, steering angle after, after I get down to this first apex. I'm going to be keeping a very consistent steering angle, and I'm just kind of modulating the brake uh, and, and, and not the throttle at all through this section to... to, uh, to to carry my corner radius through there, uh, so so once I once I get out to this kind of uh, kind of 
peak out here in the in the middle of the corner, I can feel the car start to turn back in towards the second apex, and that's when I'm going to get in throttle. And so I got in pretty aggressively there, about about 50, you know, even 60 percent right away. And now I'm now I'm turning in to get to this second apex, and uh, I. I made a couple small little changes in the steering there, but I'm still keeping the left side tires loaded because I don't want to, again, I don't want to run up onto this curbing here uh, because it will kind of upset the car, but I want to get the right sides basically on this white line and kind of straddling onto the curb there as I drive out. And as I get to that point, getting that compression, uh, I, I can start to ease into throttle more and get into full as I straighten the hands out, but it, we do end up losing the track here, uh, losing the camber on exit, so it's very easy to run wide. So you, so you got to make sure not to get in throttle too tend to full throttle too soon and so that's kind of the theme through through this corner is is the is the patience on the throttle and and you'll, you'll notice how how long i go without touching the throttle especially you know all the way past the first apex and all the way out out to the mid, mid corner there if you do end up over slowing you may need to get just a little you know burst of throttle right here uh, but what we want to do is carry in so much speed that we don't have to get back to throttle until we're ready to drive out and through turn two uh, so keeping it nice, nice and smooth on the steering, nice and consistent. Watch this one more time, real speed from the chase camera. All right, and there we have turns one and two. So now coming up to the only left-hand corner on the track, uh, Turn three, also known as the left-hander, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be coming, you know, probably after after turn two here. We're gonna be, you know, probably using most of the track. So we're gonna want to try and get back over a little bit to open up turn three a little bit. Uh, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to, you know hustle all the way back to the right side of the track. I don't need to be far right side of the track on my entry into turn three, at most about about mid track uh, here, maybe, you know, slightly farther right if I got a little bit, you know, shallower of an exit off of turn two. Uh, this is another one where there's not there's not really any good brake marker. There's no cut in the wall. There's no you know boards whatsoever. Uh, so so I'm gonna really have to use like my judgment uh, is basically where where the corner starts and to start braking. The the good part about turn three is you don't have to brake very hard at all. Similar to turn one, it's gonna be a very light brake. You see, I peaked at maybe 30% there on the brakes, and I'm just kind of carrying a little bit of tr maybe 10% trail br trail break into the into the corners as I'm doing that throughout. And again, it, just like turn one, it's very, very smooth on the steering and I'm kind of letting the car track out, you know, maybe, you know, no more than a, a car width off of the inside line here. So it, this, this kind of tightens here a little bit, uh, that turn three. And what I want to do is I want to end up track left so I can set up turn four onto no name straight because this is, uh, it's going to be very important to get a good run onto no name because basically from there it, it's, you know, very little braking from there through the end of the lap. Uh, so the exit out of turn three is very important for a good lap time and a good run out. Uh, so, so keeping that in mind, I want to make sure I get very tight uh, on the exit of turn three. And so I can see this uh, this apex curbing coming up late here. And so, so you notice I'm I go end up going down to second gear uh, right before I get I get to this apex. I don't want to go down too soon, otherwise I'm going to overslow the car. Uh, but I'm kind of again just using the trail brake uh, to kind of modulate my radius through here and to get it down and and clip basically a very late apex. So you can see it's almost kind of like a 90 here, this this apex curve, and I want to hit about halfway through, if not just past that with the left side tires. I want to use all of this cur curb uh, as I need. So you can see I get down to second gear. As, as I get to that apex, I can start to ease into the throttle to increase my corner radius through there. I get the left sides all the way down right to that grass, and then I can start to ease, uh, open my hands up and get to full throttle pretty aggressively. And you, you can notice how how um, how compromised my exit is by being right here on the far left-hand side of the track. And this is by design, and this is to open up this, this turn four here onto No Name Straight. Uh, so with that, uh, that's the end of turn three. So let's go back and watch that through one more time uh, in real speed. And just kind of notice the car placement, kind of the arc that I take to get to that late apex. All right, quick enough. Uh, so now coming up to turn four, which is dubbed the right-hander following the left-hander. 
so my exit is over here, far track left. And basically once I get to this little straight here, uh, the, I'm gonna wait for the car to finish loading the right side, it get kind of settled there in the center, and then I'm gonna turn into the right. And you'll notice I'm turning in about flat out. I need just a little bit of a lift uh, as, as I come into the apex, and I wanna clip a very late apex here. Uh, there is a bit of camber right here at the apex, but similar to turn one, we lose a lot of that camber on exit. You can see that the track kind of comes back down and it becomes very flat, and it's almost kind of crowned uh, the road there on exit. So it's very easy to uh, to, to kind of fall off the, the crown because it's a little bit off camber on the left-hand side of the track and go a little bit wide here. So I wanna try and avoid that and be very composed by the time I get to the exit. I don't want to be very loaded up. So with that is, is why I'm choosing a very light apex. I'm using just that little bit of a lift to make sure I get down. I don't want to get the right side tires right up to this curb, uh, but kind of like a Laguna Seca two weeks ago, there's kind of like a V here and that the track comes down uh, to, the e to the edge of the track where the white line is and then the curb kind of comes up. And so if I end up hitting the curb, uh, it'll lift the car up, throw me wide, very bad. So I, I want to make sure I don't hit this curb. So I want to get the right side tires right to it. And so I'm using the throttle to, to modulate that. I, I lift out of it to get the car down right onto that white line, uh, but I don't, you know, I don't hit the brakes or I don't lift out so much that the car turns aggressively and I end up hitting this curb. Now I get right back into full throttle and straighten the hands up very quickly as, as I come up over the crest. And so now you can really see the, the elevation here and how off camber this, this exit is. And you see, I need to you know, almost steer into it a little bit, uh, keeping full throttle, but just to mind the rear end of the car, keep, keep it from walking around. This exit curb here is if you need it, but I don't want to try and, you know, dry, you know, depend on that because uh, as soon as you get behind someone, it's very easy to go wide, dip the tire there, spin across uh, the track, lose a lot of time, uh, very bad time, uh, and then come out onto no name straight, uh, keeping it flat out, trying to carry as much speed onto it as possible. Uh, so with that, let's watch one more time in real speed from the chase camera, the right-hander, turn four. All right, driving it down, no name. Now we're coming up to turn five, dubbed the uphill. All the corners here are pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty simple names. Uh, not, nothing too crazy. It's basically what the corner is. Uh, so coming into the uphill, I'm going to start far track left. Uh, kind of dipping the left sides onto this this curb here. I'm gonna give just a, a, a very quick break. Uh, ba basically, I wanna turn into this thinking I don't wanna hit the brakes, but my brain's gonna end up tapping about 10% about brakes there. So so in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, don't brake, don't brake for this corner, you know, carry, carry as much speed as possible, but I'm just gonna give that little dab of brake, which is gonna help rotate the car, get myself down to that apex. So you see just that tiny little bit of brake, and then I'm right back into the throttle even before I get to the apex. So that's purely just to get the car turned. And so because we have uh, all this compression and such a big uphill right after the apex, I wanna try and get my turning done uh, as, as soon as possible, get to a late apex so that when I hit this compression and, and subsequently drive up over the hill, I have very straight hands and the car is very composed and settled. So with that, again, I'm driving down, not hitting this apex curb because it is up a little bit. It will pick up the car, upset your grip on the left side. Uh, it's left side tires, but I want to get, you know, maximize my track usage, get the right side tires right up to that. And as I come through, I'm going to downshift to fourth gear. I'm not going to do that too early. I want to do that, you know, pretty late, late uh, into the corner about when I'm getting back on throttle. See, as I get back in throttle, I'm going to downshift to fourth so I don't end up over slowing the car because you can carry quite a bit of speed, but I need to make sure I get down to this apex. Once I get there, I'm back in full throttle and now I'm just kind of managing my rotation through here. And once I, once I get you know, through the corner and into this uphill, through the compression, the car is going to get very light. And as I get to this very light, light crest, I want to make sure I have straight hands and my car is in a good spot, which is I want to be, you know, just to the right of this white line here. You can kind of straddle it, get the left side tires just over it if you need to. Uh, but this patch ends very soon. There's a little bit of grass there and it's easy to pick up a 1X if you go just a little bit wide. So you want to make sure that the, at most your left side tires are on this white line as you come up to the crest. 
rest. And with that, I can keep it full throttle up over the top. Uh, be very careful, you know, it's gonna get light, uh, almost jump a little bit uh, as it comes back down. I wanna make sure I have straight hands because any sort of steering input at that moment of, of compression on, on the landing is gonna, you know, jink the car one way or the other, very easy to spin out. And you, as here you can see where this pavement ends very abruptly, and this is right, right where the 1X is. So I wanna make sure I'm over to the right. Uh, you can kind of land and then jerk back over if you end up going a little bit wide, but uh, but that's not ideal. I want to end up right on that, that white line as I come through the corner. Uh, so this is turn five, the uphill, one more time in real speed. All right, so now coming up to turn six, which is West Bend at the end of the back straight. Uh, so this is another corner where we don't really have any brake markers. This is uh, going to be an extremely quick corner, and similar to turn five, I'm going to you know just lightly tap the brakes. Going to be thinking about trying not to hit the brakes, uh, and you know just having that mental you know image of you know don't hit the brakes, you know, will help reduce that to only that 5-10% because that's all we really need for the corner. I don't want to kill my momentum uh, because basically the run out of here is you run all the way down into turn one. That's going to be our passing opportunity. So turn six is extremely important to get a good run out of. Uh, and that, that all starts kind of from the entry. Uh, so with that, there's not really a good reference point. Uh, I'm kind of just using uh, you know my distance to the curbing here uh, as, as my kind of break and turn in reference. Uh, I think that's a little bit easier. I, I race in VR normally, so it's a little bit easier for me to judge distances. If you do need kind of a trackside reference. I think it's kind of about where this uh, this tree is uh, over to the right. Um, maybe these these two little pine trees. Yeah, so so it, it's kind of kind of as I pass the the bigger tree, come up to these these little pine trees, uh, right right at the edge of the track. That's that's what I'm going to kind of use as as my reference marker. Uh, but again, I, I don't want to. I want just want to catch these in my peripheral. I want to have my eyes to the apex. I want to be staring off to the right. Um, with that, far left-hand side of the track, at turn in, just a nice little dab of the brakes. That was about 25%. Uh, but I'm going to carry just a little bit of trail brake. I'm going to carry that 10% you know, trail brake uh, into the corner to keep the weight on the nose, uh, to, because this is a very, very flat corner. Keep the weight on the nose so I can get all the way down to that apex. Down to fourth gear, uh, and... I can kind of touch this curb, but it is still up a little bit. And if I carry in enough speed, I want to keep the left side tires loaded uh, so that I don't run out of track on exit. Uh, so as I come in, hit this late apex, kind of right before this access road, I'm going to get in throttle so I can, you know, basically increase my radius, keep keep the car off that apex because it turned in pretty aggressively. And at that point, I'm full throttle, and now I want to keep this full throttle for the rest of the lap. Uh, I can mind mind myself on exit. Exit. I can come over here, use this curbing. I, I want to be careful and only put the left side tires maybe halfway onto this curb. Uh, if I end up coming all the way to the grass, I don't end up picking up a 1x, but this curb is kind of slanted away from the track. I will bottom a little bit and it will cost you about half a tenth uh, to, to a tenth down the hill even before you even uh, get, get onto the straight. So to, to not kill our run, I don't want to use, use a whole lot of this exit curb here. So with that, I'll play back through the corner one more time, real speed from the chase camera. All right, coming up to turn seven, final corner, dubbed the downhill, uh, obviously, because we are downhill, into turn seven. Uh, so this is a easy flat corner uh, in the Indy Pro with this setup, uh, even with less downforce. This corner should be easily flat, uh, but that a lot of that comes from the setup for the corner uh, and, and how we approach it. So I'm going to start way on the left-hand side, and we drive down the hill, and there's a lot of compression here, and then it kind of flattens out, and there's a little bit of camber at the apex, and then as the rest of Lime Rock is, very flat 
on an, a little bit off camber on exit. Uh, so driving into this, I want to drive all the way down into this compression, and I want to use this natural, you know, compression of driving down the hill and you know, kind of reaching this landing. I want to use that that compression to turn the front end of the car. Otherwise, if I don't end up using this compression, I'm probably going to experience a little bit of understeer. So you can see I drive all the way down to the bottom of the hill, and right there is where the front end grips up. I turn in. I can I can ride up onto this uh, if if I need, but similar to the rest of the lap, I don't want to. I want to get the right sides right up to that uh, to that kind of transition there to keep the left sides loaded to not scrub any speed out. And basically from this point, because I've used that compression, I've gotten the rotation, the car is basically pointed down the straight at this point. Uh, I'm just going to manage the, the scrub on the car and I don't want to keep a whole lot of steering lock in. I want to I want to open up my hands as quickly as possible. You can see how, how little steering I have in at, at this point and just let the car naturally track out and not, not scrub the left side tires. That was the big issue I found with the baseline setup is even coming in here with like straight hands, the baseline setup, it was digging in the left side tires here too much and it was just scrubbing so much speed off of the car uh, coming onto the straight here. Uh, so with, uh, with the baseline plus setup, shouldn't have to worry about that, should, should be able to carry the speed and not scrub it, uh, just open up the hands. Uh, you can use this exit curbing if you need, uh, but try, you know, you, you know you, if you do have your setup correctly through there you shouldn't need it uh, and then it's just going to be that little bit of safety if you are following someone closely uh, just in case in case you do track out so easy flat uh, through turn seven the downhill let's play it one more time in real speed And you can kind of almost hear the revs there, you know, drop down that little bit uh, coming through the corner. So, so that's why it's just so important to, you know, minimize the scrub, carry as much speed out of there as possible. And with that, that is the 44.929 around Lime Rock Park. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions uh, on the setup, on the track, uh, driving the car, anything, uh, just let me know. Hit me up here, YouTube, in the comments, on the iRacing forums, on Discord, in the race sessions, wherever. Uh, always happy to help you guys out. Uh, and with that, uh, good luck this week, and I will see you guys on track.